Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com and you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, an incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry, and we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. Watch those freeways. Bye. Oh, goodbye. Oh, 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 no, I've forgotten something. Wally World, here we come. <laughs> Well, good morning. Tell you what, I'm excited to be here. This is a little bit awkward, though. Um, not, not the preaching part. It's being at church. Uh, it's been like a month and a half since I've been here, so it, it is kind of weird. I, I had Paul Rogers come up to me in the first service, and he's like, he gives me a big old hug, and he's like, man it's good to see you. I'm like, man, it's good to be seen. And he's like, it's better to be seen than to be viewed. And I'm like, mm, never thought about that, but that's a pretty good point. Uh, but yeah, it feels a little awkward. I've been on the road and, and I tell you that, you know, about a month, month and a half ago, um, I was just driving down the road and it was just clear as day. It's like, God gave me a message. Like I just wanted to, I wanted to preach like that moment. I think it might've been a Sunday. Like I was gone and I'm like, Edward, I need to preach. So I, I really appreciate his generosity of sharing this uh, platform to be able to, to speak to you today. I'm excited about what God has, has kind of has spoken to me. Uh, the last time uh, I, ha I had the opportunity to preach, he was sick, and it was just one of those weeks when you really don't want to teach. Uh, my wife was in the back with a sign saying hypocrite and, and all that stuff, so uh, it, was, uh, it was just one of those weeks, but you know what, uh, it, it all worked out, but... But, you know, we've been talking about vacation and, and, and rest and Sabbath and all that stuff. And before we jump into that, would you mind if I went on a little bit of a tangent? Oh, thank you. Thank you. There's one person that doesn't mind anyway. Um, it, isn't it crazy how polarized our world is today? It, this is interactive. You can go, yeah, no, what are you talking about? Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's very polarized. It's, it's, it's either one way or the other, and, and it is so divided you know, it's like you're either on the left or you're on the right. You know what I'm talking about? You watch the news? You either watch CNN or Fox News. Make sense? Okay. Or, or nothing at all. That's true. There's three divisions. Um, that's the moral high ground, though. Uh, anyway, but yeah, so it is, it is so divided. And in, in, in even like in our food, it's either like organic, non-GMO, or, or whatever. But everything is just, there's no topic that's, there's no topic that's off limits when it comes to just being black or white. There is no gray. It's one way or the other, and we all know where we stand on that. And, and you know, I want to think, you know, you have a tool, and, and welcome to everyone that's on Facebook Live. Glad, glad that you've joined us. Um, one of the, social media is such a powerful tool. I mean, I love social media. I use it all the time. Uh, but, but sometimes I think it's actually led to more division than it has unity. And, and the reason I say that is, is, is I'm okay with it because I can choose, right? I can choose to either engage or disengage with, with the media, but sometimes it breaches, um, it breaches into the home. And, and like we had this tense, very tense conflict within our home. And it was just one of these, one of these topics that completely polarizes people. And um, Kennedy would come in. We had probably a dozen conversations about this where she would just come in. It was, she was really stressed out. She couldn't figure out what was going on. And so if it's okay with you, I thought I would bring that division for you today and, and see if it generated the same response in you that it did me. This all started about two months ago. Uh, but if you would, you know, go ahead and, and, and play that clip. Laurel. 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 Okay, you can stop it. Laurel. How many of you are like, why in the world did he just share that? I have no idea what that's about. 
Really? All those people went to the first service. And nobody was like, huh, I don't have a clue what that is. How many of you heard the whole Laurel Yanny thing that was going on about two months ago? Isn't it crazy? How, how many of you have never heard it? What, what did you hear? This is, um, this is not rhetorical. What did you hear? Did, did anyone hear Yanny? See, we have, isn't that weird? We have Yanny people in the house. My daughter would come in. Huh? I heard both. You heard both. Isn't it weird? Like, Kennedy would come into the house, and she's like, Dad, we need, this says, this says Yanny. And I'm like, it says Laurel. I don't have a clue what you're talking about. But there was just like this tense division. It kept going on and on. And, and so I've come to the conclusion that it says Laurel, and everyone else is wrong. So, Team Laurel? All right, there we go. Everybody else just uh, out of your minds. Yeah, but it's crazy. Sometimes we think we hear something. And have you ever been in the thing where you're talking to someone and they think they understand you, but you know that they don't? Like, and they're sitting there, I know exactly what you mean. Like, no, you really don't, or you wouldn't even say that right now. It's kind of that type of thing, but they can do it with one word. But then I heard this other clip, and, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you listen to this clip. I'm not going to explain it to you. We're going to come back and look at it a little bit later. If you've heard this clip, don't ruin it for everybody else. You're cool. You've heard it. Okay, we got it. So go ahead and play it. All right. It, it sounds like a bunch of static and a bunch of noise, doesn't it? Some of you are like, I know what that is. That's the music that my kids listen to. <laughs> it, it sounds a lot like that. Now, we'll come back and we will uh, take a look at that racket just a little bit later. But, you know, we're, we're just going to jump in. We've been talking about uh, vacation and Sabbath and rest. Um, how many of you stress out over vacation? I know I do. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Just getting back from vacation. Um, yeah, vacation can be a little bit stressful. And, and it's funny, it doesn't really matter where you go. Well, I mean, what is the point of vacation anyway? I mean, isn't it the point of vacation to like get away, relax, enjoy yourself, find a little peace and quiet? Is, is that the point of vacation? Spend time together with your family? Um, I'll give an example. Like we went to Washington, D.C., and I thought it was pretty cool. We walked like 17 miles a day. <laughs> Look at me. I don't walk 17 miles a day. So I don't call that a vacation. I call that a workout. You know what I mean? Like my feet are hurting. Like it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I just want to go back to the hotel. And I spend most of my life in a hotel. I just want to go back to the hotel and put my feet up. My dogs are barking. How many uh, Disney fans we have in the house? Oh, see, the Disney fans are quiet. I totally predicted them to be like, woo, woo. Yeah, there you go. I hate Disney. <laughs> um, sorry, I totally set you up on that. Um, no, I mean, it's a, it's a great place to go, but sometimes it's like, you know, we went, and I was sitting here stressing out over how much it costs to go to Disney. Am I the only one? I'm like, $10 for a drink? Normally I say drank. I did say drink, didn't I? No, drank. Um, I, whenever I go, it's like I remember it's when Frozen came out and there was Elsa and Anna. I stood in line for like three or four hours while they were riding roller coasters so that they can see princesses. You know, it was so stinking expensive and I just like, man, what's the, what's the point of vacation? Like we could take this money and truly do something pretty beneficial with it. I was just kind of convicted, like I don't want to be here. But then how many times do you go on vacation and you can't let it go because you're thinking about all the things that do not stop at home and at work whenever you get back? Am I the only one? I saw one hand. All right, I'm preaching here. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here. Sometimes it's better off not to even go because I'm sitting on vacation thinking about all the emails that are building up, everything that's going on, and it is just stressful. Now, I had a unique experience the other day. Um, actually, I was preparing for this message because really the point of vacation is that we would find rest, right? That we would take a break from the routine, that we would take time to connect with our family and with others. And so in preparation for this message, because you really, it's kind of intimidating as a speaker because I don't, I really don't want to just come up here and share my opinions with you or our stories with you. I want to come up here and share something with you that, that I got from God. And so um, you know, I already told you the story called Edward. And so last week when I was supposed to be here interviewing people, it's just a long story, um, I ended up in Nashville. And I was in Nashville and I wanted to do like this creative getaway. 
just to relax, to chill, so that I could bring like a powerful message from God to you. Have you ever heard of a float spa? Yeah, I've never heard of a float spa. I'm not alone. Okay, you ever heard of a sensory deprivation chamber? Okay, now, first of all, I don't know why they call it that, right? Because if you're, let me ask you this question. If you're at home at night, the lights are off, which means we've deprived your senses, you can't see. Are the noises louder or more quiet? They're much louder, so it's not depriving any of my senses. They're actually all hyperacute. But to go in and picture a storm cellar, this is in Nashville, Picture a storm cellar, you open this door, and there's about 10 inches of water in the bottom of it. And when you get in there and you close the door, it's pitch black. You can't see anything. But the cool part is in this 10 inches of water is about 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt. Now, when you have a body like mine, you tend to float anyway. Um, When you have Epsom salt of 1,000 pounds in there, you're very buoyant, and all you do is float. And, and so my point in going in there was that I would get some type of revelation from God. I would have some, some word from God that I could come back and, and share with you what it is that God laid on my heart. And I went in there. I was in there in the pitch black, in the dark. You can't see anything floating in Epsom salt water that's the same as your body temperature for 90 minutes. And you want to know what God told me? I didn't hear a thing from him. <laughs> didn't hear a thing from him. All I could do is Relax. I mean, it was the craziest thing. You know what the loudest noise was? The sound of my breathing and my heart. Boom, 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 in my ear. And I was in there for 90 minutes, and it felt like I might have been in there for 15 to 20 minutes. Then I began to read some stuff about afterwards, and it's like that 90 minutes in a deprivation chamber or a float spa is equivalent to an eight-hour night of sleep. That... Your uh, central nervous system is rested by 90% in spending that time. It was the most relaxed. I'm like, this is a vacation. I need one of these in my home. And I could get that cheaper than going to Disney. Yeah. But it was just so awesome to just be able to, to sit back and to chill and relax. Because if we're honest with ourselves, there's a lot of noise going on in the world today, isn't there? Sorry, Edward. That, yeah, sorry about that. There's a lot of noise going on in the world that, dead gummit. Tell him I'll call him back, sorry. Does anyone else live this way? Okay, this joke has run its course. <laughs> okay. Um, does anyone else live that way? How, how many of you, and Edward, we were praying before the service, and he, he told me that he had listened. I think it was Stephen Furtick or somebody was listening, and that we spend 17 hours a, a week looking at these devices. Now, I'm, I'm guilty of that, too. I'm not preaching to you. I mean, we look at these devices, yet we say we don't have time for anything. It's crazy. How many of you, when you come to church, and I better do this so that it doesn't go off on accident, like during a serious moment, right, and you stick the phone in your pocket, and you're sitting here, Edward's teaching or whatever, and all of a sudden you hear, how many of you just like completely check out when that happens? Like, I'm like okay, wonder what, I, I need to look up that Bible verse on my phone. Uh huh. Yeah, it's funny. Someone, uh, I was, I was actually out of town. It was a Sunday, and I was talking with someone, and we're sitting there texting back and forth. And it kind of gets to that point where it's like we should just quit texting and call. And I call, and it immediately goes to voicemail. It's like I can't talk right now. I'm like, you're texting in church, aren't you? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> um, find out later. It's sure enough. Um, but these things were, uh, um, I think, I think Stephen Furtick called it like the, the devil's shock collar, right? We just, we kind of put it here and it's like, oh, oh. but there's so much noise. It's really hard to, to drown out the noise, isn't it? So, I mean, this is one series of noise. And, and again, this isn't a rhetorical question. I want participation here. What are some other noises on the outside that, that, that really distract us today? Sermons? Oh, I was like, okay, point taken. I'll speed it up. Uh, I didn't. What, what did you really say? Because that's what I heard. Sirens. sirens. Yes, yes, sirens. I swear I thought you said sermons. Um, Yanny, Laurel, I mean, it fits. Um, 
Yeah, sirens, they're, they're constantly like, and I work for a mobile application company that we put sirens on phones to get people's attention and it's called alarm fatigue. It's like, I've heard too many alarms. So we're constantly aware of that. What else? Children. Children. <laughs> yes, get rid of them. Um, <laughs> what else? Train. Train. Oh, yeah, that is a lot of noise. I thought you said trees. I'm like, don't cut down the trees. That's not the point of the. I can't hear anything up here. Is it always like this, Edward? It's really hard. <laughs> I'm going to quit asking questions. Um, TV. And, and, and it's funny because I don't have satellite. I haven't had satellite in like, we've been married for 18 years, and we haven't had TV but like six months. And so that's like a moral high ground. Like, we don't even have TV. But if you ask me if I've seen Game of Thrones, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen Game of Thrones. <laughs> House of Cards, oh, I love House of Cards. That's awesome. It doesn't matter what it is. I do have Netflix, and so I binge, and there's so much noise. Sometimes it's, it's really hard to hear from God. <laughs> um, it, it's really hard to hear if God's trying to speak to us, and, and there's all this noise. For me, it's constant. When I'm on my tractor working, got my headphones in, I'm listening to an audio book, a podcast, a video, because I have YouTube Red where it'll play even though it's closed in my pocket. Listening to a video, um, doesn't matter what it is. Music, there's this constant stimulus going on in my mind. And you know, when I was sitting in that float spa, it's one of the few times that you're really, really silent to just be alone with your thoughts and be alone with the Lord. Um, so it, it was, it was kind of crazy, but how many of you um, understand that it's, it's not just the noise on the outside that makes it hard to hear from God. How many of you understand that there's a lot of noise on the inside that I think is even louder than the noise on the outside? You see, the noise on the inside is so loud, and I just want to give you an example because there's no better place to hear that noise than at church. Right, you walk in the door, and ladies, I know how you think, I know what you're thinking. It's like, look at her. She thinks she looks good. She shouldn't be wearing that. Uh-huh. That's a knowing laugh. Like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or, or she thinks she's so good. Or maybe, maybe you're not focused on others. You've just, like, gone dark internally. Like, I don't belong here. Like, the, I'm just so different from these people. Oh, look at that person raising their hands. They're a holy roller. You know? And then you kind of learn to play along and kind of do the thing because you're just really, at the end of the day, trying to fit in. But there, I, I remember whenever used to, when I was a kid, and they would, they would say the verse, and I was so nervous about looking it up because I, I don't know where it's at. I'm sitting here beating myself up. You should know this. You're stupid. You're an idiot. Blah, 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 blah. But the voices are so loud, both on the inside and on the outside. But at the end of the day, you know what we need more than anything? We need to be able to just say that we can hear from God. How many of you believe that God still speaks today? Yeah. God still speaks today. I, I, I want to share something with you. And uh, I want to share a verse with you from Hebrews chapter 1. And, and I thought this was fascinating. Uh, I love Hebrews. And it, but it says in, in Hebrews 1, it says, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. And so there were some very creative ways that God spoke in the Old Testament with the priest and the prophets. Um, one story I love is that there were some people making fun of a bald guy and a bear came and mauled them. Like, don't make fun of bald people, right? That's a clear message from God. Don't make fun of bald people. We worked hard for this. Another one, God spoke through a donkey. If that's ever happened to you, don't raise your hand. It's not gonna help you. Um, Angels, like an angel appeared. Like I'm, I've often wondered, what would that look like? You know, you're walking around, boom, there's an angel. Hey, how you doing? Um, God spoke in so many different ways. And so it says, it says, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed to be heir of all things and through he is, whom he has made the universe. And so the point of this and the reason I brought this up is that God chose one mode to speak to people long ago and then he had a different way through his son, Jesus Christ, to speak in the time that this was written. And so I asked the question, how does God speak today? And the challenge that we have as a church is we have focused primarily on two methods, two ways in which God speaks 
What, what's one of them? <laughs> yeah, you name them both at the same time. Totally ruined it. Uh, his word. Right, so we tell people, listen, if you want to hear from God, you need to open up God's word. And listen, I believe that. But how many of you understand that God can speak through someone who's never seen a Bible? Because here's what I found that happens is if we're honest, a lot of us don't spend as much time in God's word as we should or we think we should or we've been told that we need to. And what happens when we do that? Well, it leads us into more shame and guilt and condemnation. We don't measure up. We don't blah, blah, blah. It actually makes that we're wanting to connect with God and hear from God, but what happens because of what we've been taught, the stories that we've told ourselves, we go to read the scripture and we don't know what a word means and we don't know what it's talking about and then all of a sudden, all we've done is turn the dial up on the inside and the noise is so loud, we're never gonna hear from God. Am I the only one that does this? Right? And so there's all this noise, like, how many of you have truly heard from God lately? And, and the funny part is, is there's, there's two extremes here. Like you all know that one person, it's like it, they hear from God daily, all the time, like an ongoing conversation. They get a new vehicle, get a new truck. Like, where'd you get that truck? Oh, the Lord told me to get it. It's like, really? Why'd you get a Ford? Does, does the Lord like the Ford? Like, because I, I just got a Toyota and the Lord didn't tell me to get the Toyota. He told me to get a cheap one, you know, like... I don't understand how it works, but these people just have like this ongoing conversation and dialogue with God that in some ways I'm jealous of. And then in other ways, I'm like, I wish I heard from God like that, but I don't. And then there's the other extreme, right? The other extreme is the person who says, I don't know that I have ever heard from God and heard his voice. So, so you have one way that God speaks is through his word, and don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I do believe God speaks through the power of his word, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, what's another way that we hear from God? Prayer. And if you're not careful, prayer can do the same thing of turning up the noise in our life internally as it did with the scriptures. Because how many of you have gone to, um, you're laying down in bed and you're taught to say your prayers before you go to bed and you go to pray and you fall asleep before you finish? Raise your hand. Whoever doesn't have their hand up is a liar. We all do it. The purpose of going into prayer was to hear from God, to, to, to communicate with God, because that is the one thing that's gonna bring us true rest and relaxation, is to be able to have this dialogue with God. Our sole purpose was no different than going to the scriptures. Our sole purpose was to connect with God, but what happens when we go to connect with God, we lose attention, we lose focus, we start thinking about our to-do list and the things that didn't get done and the checklist that's going on in your mind, and before you know it, you're like, I'm such a horrible Christian, I can't even pray. Isn't it crazy, the stuff that goes on in this dialogue in our life? And so what, what I want to ask and what I want to kind of talk about is, is how we can truly know that we can hear from God in a number of ways. How many of you um, understand that you can hear from God through your circumstances? Through your circumstances. But the, the problem is so many times we find ourselves in these circumstances and once again, we go back to the old story that's going on in our minds so much. It's like because instead of truly being in the moment, being present, understanding what God is doing in our life, we begin to say, why me? This always happens to me. We never stop and say, God, what are you trying to teach me here? What we do is we just go into a time of prayer and we just begin to vomit out everything on God. But how many of you understand the true purpose of prayer and spending time alone in God's word is for him to speak to us, not you to speak to him? He knows your heart. He knows your circumstances. He knows your situation. He knows your motives. He knows things about you you don't even know about yourself yet. And yet we feel like we have to sit down to God and explain everything to him. I learned something really cool last week. is that the word listen and the word silence have all the same letters. You ever thought about that? The word listen, some of you are like writing it down, L-I-S-T-E-N, yeah, it does. Listen and silence have all the same letters. But we want to go hear from God, and what do we do? We just start talking. And in those circumstances, when God's trying to speak to us, we start talking to ourselves so much that we really can't even hold captive what it is that God may be trying to say 
to us. How many of you realize that God can speak to us through others? And when God speaks to us through others, this happens in a couple of different ways. One, I'll tell you, God speaks to me all the time through my wife. If you don't believe me, just ask her. She'll tell you it's straight from God. <laughs> she will. You know, there, there's a one way that God speaks to us. I mean, people, others, you, God uses others to speak to us, and sometimes that's you're in the middle of a conversation and you just feel like you need to say something or share something with someone. That, that's one way, and that happens all the time. There's a, there's a lot of men that I have relationships in this church that just in a conversation with them, they'll say something that just says, man, that, that, was, from, that was from God. But how many of you realize that people speak to us in other ways that they're not even meaning to communicate? And, and the term that we use in, in the men's work that we're a part of is the Crucible Project is if you spot it, you got it, right? It's that it, everyone else is a mirror for ourselves to see ourselves. And so I'll tell you an example of how this happens. And so, you know, I told you in the first service, Paul Rogers came up to me and he said, hey, brother, I've missed you. You know what the dialogue can be? Oh, you miss me. You, you keeping time and attendance now? You got a little chart somewhere where you're keeping a star? You're keeping up? Brother, no, I've been here. Huh? Come on, you're making me feel awkward here. Am I the only one that does that stuff? Like, like, it's like, okay, Paul, I know what you said, but what did you really mean? You said, oh, I'm praying. And women, you're bad about this. I'll pray for you, poor thing. You know, what are you really saying through that? And it'll just kind of play on our insecurity. But how many of you realize we get so focused on the story? We get so focused on what we think that person meant. We never stop to realize that this isn't about them. This is about me. This is something going on in me. And that we would take that moment to say, God, what is this? What, what is this about? What are you trying to Show me here. It's really, really powerful stuff. You think God can speak through dreams and visions? Yeah. I was talking with David yesterday. He was telling me about a vision that he had. I thought it was really awesome. Tied it all back to Scripture and the way that God was speaking to him. What about our thoughts? Can I, can I tell you something, a secret? I mean, this is a secret that only the hyper-spirituals like myself know. Um, is when we say, you know what, God said to me the other day, you know what that really means? I was thinking the other day. You know, I was thinking the other day, and then that turns into, well, God was speaking to me, but I believe it with everything that I am. The, the, the challenging part, and this is where Scripture comes in, is learning how to discern the voices in our life, because there's times that I was 100% solely convinced that God had told me to do something, and when I did it, it was clear that God did not tell me to do this usually involves debt, um, but you know, it's like God was not, if anything, God was probably saying something to the contrary, and I just couldn't hear it. You see, the, the beautiful part is when you're hearing all these voices and all these things are going on, it's by going to Scripture and God speaking through Scripture that you begin to discern and know the, vo know the voice of God and the Holy Spirit that's in our lives. Because there's times I hear a voice that I would say, that is not from God because he would never say that to me. That comes from me. That comes from somewhere else. I, I do believe the best opportunity for us, especially in today's world, is to spend time with God and just be silent. I want to read a verse of scripture to you, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 13. He says, while you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. Man, now every time I say that word, listen, I think silence. Let me say it again. While you were doing all these things, and listen, a lot of these things are good things. A lot of these things are providing food for your family. A lot of these things are church things. A lot of these things are family things. But when you were doing all of these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Is it possible that God is trying to speak to us all the time? Maybe we just don't want to hear what God has to say. So we put our headphones in. We turn on the TV. We pick up our phones. You see, 
what I've been teaching you so far is that we have to be able to identify the noises, the noises both externally and internally, that we can turn that dial down, that we can hear from God. But here's the cool part. The more time you spend with God, the more you begin to understand and discern, discern the difference of the Holy Spirit that's speaking within you. And there comes a point that you can hear a voice within the noise. You know, we had that clip earlier. I want to play that clip for you again of the noise. I'm going to say a word to you. Hopefully this is like blows your mind. If I were to say to you, the juice of lemons makes fine punch. You're like, what, what does that mean? The juice of lemons makes fine punch. Now listen to this noise again. Can you hear it now? You're like, holy smokes, was it there the whole time? It's the same clip. We just played it over and over. It was there the entire time. Okay, how many of you, like, that's cool. Well, all right, both of you. You see, there's this amazing thing that can happen as you spend more and more time alone, alone with God as you begin to discern his voice even in the midst of the chaos. Even in the midst of conflict, there is this voice that is speaking to us. And what happens so many times is, is say, okay, say you have conflict at home with a spouse. Not that that happens with you. It just happens with me. Or maybe you're having uh, problems with your boss or your coworkers. That, that doesn't, uh, this is on Facebook. I don't have problems with my boss. Um, but maybe, maybe you have conflict and you're in the midst of this conflict, and you are so focused on what you're feeling and what you think the other person's saying and all this like turmoil that's going in and on inside, this person you are solely convinced is your enemy, what you fail to notice is that the Holy Spirit, God in spirit that lives within you, Scripture comes back to you saying, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It's that juice of lemons makes fine punch. That's the Holy Spirit speaking in our life. But we don't know how to differentiate it between the noise. The only way that you're going to be able to do it is to step away from the noise, turn it off, turn it down, or spend so much time alone with God that you learn how to discern the voice. And so the best thing I could think, the best way to kind of land this plane and to end this thing is to give you an opportunity to respond to God. Go ahead and bow your heads. And if there's a musician in the house that can come and play, I just want to give you a time of response because so many times whenever I walk into this building or, or any church, I can feel the collective pain of people who are here. There's just the struggles that we're going through. Maybe they're financial. Maybe they're relational. Um, maybe they're of our own making. Sometimes it's things that are done to us. But there's just so much pain whenever you walk into this place and you begin to reflect internally. I just want to give you an opportunity to hold these thoughts captive. So I just want you to bow your heads, to close your eyes. I don't want you to focus. I don't want you to try to conjure up anything. I just want you to be quiet. there's something coming up for you. Maybe it's something that you're anxious about. Maybe it's a, a relationship. Maybe it's, it's finances. Maybe it's your standing with God. You're like, Shane, I've never heard the voice of God. I, don't be afraid to pull out your phone and take a note. Uh, be afraid to grab a pen or a pencil and write it down on a piece of paper. I want you to hold that captive and I just want you to sit there with it. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's doubt that God even exists. Maybe it's sarcasm because you don't think God can even speak today. In your mind, take whatever that is and just hold it out in front of you. Put it out in front of you that you can walk around that doubt, that fear, that anxiety and look at it from every different angle. Ask 
ask the Lord, why is this here? In the silence, hear from God this morning. here and you just you, all this is just noise to you you don't know what this is about one I commend you for being here but the scripture says that it's all about Christ that all things were made by him and through him and he is the way he is the truth he is the life and no one can come into the father but by him see sometimes there's just so much noise going on in our lives that we don't hear from God but sometimes the reason we don't hear from God is we're just disconnected from the life source and that life source is Jesus Christ I don't want you to leave here today without talking to someone ask God what to do with those doubts ask God to do what to do with that anger and the sarcasm and the animosity toward the gospel. Father, we love you. And I thank you that, you know, this time of year, I just think about our freedoms and everything that we have and how blessed we are. And God, we're just blessed so much that we're just in inundated with this constant noise. God, I pray that you would help us to find this rhythm. Help us to find this rhythm that is natural to the ebb and flow of life. That the, we would have this relationship with Christ that would breathe. Those moments of closeness followed by the moments of separation the moments of closeness, that you would help us to evaluate the gaps in between. Help us to find silence so that we can listen. Open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart, Lord, so that we can listen with everything that we are, with our entire being. Because, Father, we live in a world today that desperately needs the message of hope that only the gospel brings. But Father, it's just not our world that needs it. We need it. I need it. Give us rest. Give us peace. And God, I pray that you would help every one of us who call upon the name of Jesus Christ to be able to embody and understand what the term peace and quiet really means. Give us peace that passes all understanding. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today. And if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ. Or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day and listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you. Have a great week.